Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API Recommended Practice 572 Inspection Practices for Pressure Vessels. In the previous lectures, we discussed sub clauses 4.1 and 4.2. In this lecture, we will discuss the sub clauses 4.3 Materials of Construction. We will discuss and focus on the materials used to construct pressure vessels and heat exchangers. Pressure vessels constructed out of metallic materials are made from First, carbon steel is the most common material used to construct pressure vessels Second, austenitic or ferritic alloy Alloy 400, nickel, titanium, high nickel alloys, or aluminum alloys, are used to construct pressure vessels, depending on compatibility with the fluid service. Third, copper and copper alloys, except alloy 400, are seldom used in refinery vessels, but are common with heat exchanger tubes, and may be found in petrochemical plant vessels. Pressure vessels constructed out of nonmetallic materials are usually made from fiber reinforced plastic FRP. FRP can be made with different resins as the matrix material and typically use glass fiber as the reinforcement. FRP can be more resistant to some corrosive services. A lined vessel is usually more economical than one built of a solid corrosion resistant material. However, when the pressure vessel will operate at a high temperature, a high pressure, or both, solid alloy steels may be both necessary and economical. Metallic liners may be made of a ferritic alloy, alloy 400, nickel, lead or any other metal resistant to the corrosive agent. Metallic liners are installed in various ways. First rolled, or explosion bonded, integral part of the plate material rolled, or explosion bonded before fabrication of the vessel. Second welding. Separate sheets of metal fastened to the vessel by welding. Third weld overlay. Corrosion-resistant metal can also be applied to the vessel surfaces by various weld overlay processes. Nonmetallic liners The most common nonmetallic lining materials are reinforced concrete, acid brick, refractory material, insulating material, carbon brick or block, rubber, phenolic epoxy coatings, glass, and plastic. As illustrated in figures, examples of weld overlay, strip lined, and re reinforced fractory. As illustrated in figures, the main components of tube heat exchangers shells, tubes bundles, tube sheets, and channels and baffles. In next slide we will discuss the materials used to construct the various parts of heat exchangers. Please note that the materials are selected to safely handle the service and the heat load required and most economically resist the type of corrosion expected or selected. Heat exchangers First part, exchanger shells are usually made of carbon steel but may be made of a corrosion resistant alloy or clad with a corrosion resistant material. Second part, exchanger channels and baffles 
are made of carbon steel or a suitable corrosion resistant alloy material usually similar to the material of the tubes third part tubes bundles are made of copper based alloys or steel where water is used as a cooling or condensing medium but may be made of duplex stainless steel or the tube inside diameter may be coated baked epoxy or similar in water applications where copper alloys or steels will not provide sufficient corrosion protection and also may be made titanium in seawater applications fourth part tube sheets are usually made of admiralty brass or steel high alloy steels clad or solid where water is used as a cooling or condensing medium and also may be made titanium in seawater applications review questions question number one which the most common material used to make pressure vessels answer is a Question number two. Which of the following materials is seldom used to make a pressure vessel but is common in heat exchanger tubes? Answer is B. Question number three. Titanium tubes are often found in which of the following processes? Answer is D. Question number four. What is the primary purpose for installing a metallic liner on the inside of a vessel? Answer is D. Question number five. Which of the following is not a way metallic liners are attached to the base metal? Answer is C. Question number 6. Which of the following non-metallic materials is sometimes used to build vessels in corrosive services? Answer is B. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile.